naked shamanism. Welcome to With Insights Radio. I'm your host, Iggy Garcia. I will take you on a journey across the universe through shamanism, metaphysical, and holistic. Well, hello, everybody. It's been a while. It's been a while since I've been on here. I've been laying low, just kind of watching how 2021 progresses. Uh, So we're on the 12th day of the new year. And you know what? It's been kind of interesting, to say the least. A lot's happened. A lot is going on. Um, But, you know, it is what it is, you know, as a good friend of mine would say. It is what it is. Excuse me, as I clear my throat. Well, you know, we're here in this interesting moment in time where we're experiencing some very unique things that are happening. Us as Americans, especially. Uh, The world, we are all in it together with the COVID thing. We're all suffering through that process. We're all going through the fear and the emotions, the roller coasters, the feelings. Some of us believe it, some of us don't, which is fine with me. You believe what you believe, you have to believe what you have to believe. What makes you, centers you and keeps you safe and keeps you happy. Um, No matter what anybody tells you, you're still gonna do whatever you wanna do in the end. So, but you take advice and you process it and you listen to it and if it's good for you, you use it. But anyhow, I'm not here to rant, rant and rave or anything. I'm just here to check in, let you know that I'm doing okay. Just uh, depositing my, 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 my stimulus check, if you want to call it, to stimulate me to go buy things in the store <laughs> or stimulate me to pay my bills. Either way, I'm going to get stimulated, right? And so, yeah, it came yesterday. So was I excited? How could you get excited about that? I mean... I'm grateful that we got something, but in the end, the government will get back their $600 through taxes and all kinds of stuff. So the government never loses. So in the end, is it going to relieve me for some things? Sure. And, you know, can we do better? Sure. Um, So right now we're going in a process where we are, we are um, seeing a lot of stuff that uh, is unfamiliar to us. Uh, things that we go, oh my God, that only happens in third world countries. Um, you know, I'm from Peru. This kind of stuff happens a lot. Where people get upset with the government and protest and storm the the capital and do stuff like that. So it's not a huge surprise. And then we have three different presidents all within one month. So, you know, it's kind of a, you know, kind of a strange thing. Um, and good morning to everybody saying good morning. Good morning, Sherry. I see you popping in. And, you know, depending on what side you're on, you're going to agree or disagree with whatever comes out of my mouth or comes out of anybody's mouth about what you're witnessing and what you're seeing and how things are playing out. For a lot of people, everything they're witnessing is a clean cut and dry, and that's how it is. And, oh, my God, that's the way it is. And you know what? For you, that may be true. But I'm here to let you know that there are other people who don't necessarily see it that way. And not that you're dumb or anything or stupid, neither one of us are, but we have to understand that there are other people who think differently than you. Ooh, (laughs) that a shocker. I didn't mean to shock anybody with that statement, you know, but you know, there are other people who don't think progressively. They don't think, you know, you know, uh, with a liberal mind, they don't think, um, they have very conservative, very, uh, different way of approaching life there are some people who are radicalized and people who are radicals but there's radicals on both sides of the fence friends there's radicals on the liberal and there's radicals on on the right side of the fence so but either way they're all americans right are they of course they are they're americans and they have the right to voice opinion now i'm not in agreement with the storming of the capital and busting things down but you know what remember historically americans were actually sent here to this country because they were criminals and they were prisoners and they were the riffraff of England. They were the ones that we didn't want. They were the ones who got thrown over here into this penal colony of sorts. And you know what? And then we made it. Then we were the 13 colonies and we survived and we did well. Then one day somebody went to a bar, got drunk and said, I'm sick of the king telling us what the fuck to do. The king's pissing me off and everything he does. And we don't, we need a king. We don't need no damn king. 
you know, we should fight and fight for our freedom. You know, there's other people who are sitting at home going, what are those guys doing? Why are they radicalizing? Why are they so upset? We have it all. We have lands. We have this and that. And, but, you know, it's a small group of people who cause revolutions. Okay. And like I said, I'm not on any side. I want you just to think about this for a minute. Okay. You, because you're stable and you're secure and you like your country the way it is, you're going to love it the way it is. Okay. But those of you who don't like this country in the direction it's going are going to do complete opposite of everybody who doesn't do anything. Okay, so some of those people are your friends. Some of those people you know. Some of those people, you know them, who they are. Okay? The only thing that's happened here in the last four years is that now it has a face. Now we can see what's happening in our country. Things that have been quiet in the shadows, in the back, you know, this happened. But we're a country of revolutionaries. We're a country of rebels. We are a country, we were founded on the principles of rebellion. You know, so you should not be shocked for what you saw happen on the capital of the United States, because that is part of our history. That is part, well, maybe not so much me, because I was part of the Native Americans who got the shit beat out of them. But anyhow, and enslaved. But anyhow, <laughs> we come, that is our history. We come from the rebellion. If you want to play Star Wars game, we are the, those are the rebels. Those are the people who don't agree with the empire of America. This American empire that has been created. That we are creating. Because we're a very young country. But not everybody's going to see it that way. Because everybody's going everybody's to go, oh, it's racism. It's racist. It's bigotry. It's sexism. My God. Could you imagine what it was like back then? In the 1700s, 1800s? Racism, sexism, bigotry. Well, I'm pretty sure it was a lot worse than it is today. Uh, people got hung. People got lynched. People got murdered. Not that it doesn't happen today. Now we just see it in the front of in the front aisles. We just right there in the media, right in the news. Okay, so I'm not a constitutionalist uh, historian, or whatever. So you know, I only know the Constitution the way I interpret it myself and how it's interpreted to me. And how, you know, how I look at it. Freedom of speech, right? And people are going to say, well, it's a private company. And that private company has a right to, you know, have a code of conducts and things they don't want people to say. I agree with that. That's a true statement. I get that. But the point is, and someone, my friend David made a really good point today, too. He said, you know, President Trump does have a platform. He has the presidential, uh, you know, the speaker who speaks for him, you know, the secretary of press, or whatever. And then, you know, he also has access to that big old camera. He can cl click on and turn it on. Maybe he just forgot. I don't know. Either way, you know, and then he just tweeted everybody and let everybody know. And So really, your choice is to decide what part of history you want to be on. What part of history is important to you? What part of history are you going to align yourself with? Can you be in the middle? Can you be... Uh, a bystander and just watch it all fall apart uh, yeah sure those are called watchers people who watch and people who watch them burn it on one side and burn on the other side and go well i got to align myself with something you know and there are people who are going to get into the fight there are people going to get into the f into the fire into the flame they're either going to crash or burn and that's how it is there's no two ways about it now i'm not here to condone or say this person's right right because you know what I don't have that mentality and that thinking to know what that is. But I know I grew up in a bar. <clears throat> and growing up in a bar, <clears throat> excuse me, bar restaurant, you meet all kinds of characters. Okay. Uh, my dad worked for the CIA, for those of you who don't know. He's dead now, so I can publicly say it. And you know what? Those guys came in there every day. Just about every day. If Friday and Saturday was like hangout place at Garcia's. Okay. Because everybody, that's was the place everybody met. Because Garcia's was the place to be at, when it, back in the 80s, when we were popular, when, we, when it was big, when there was not a lot of restaurants anymore, you know, mom and pops. And when you work for them, shit, you have your own restaurant. I met some really interesting people who see life completely different. I've met bikers. I met FBI agents, NSA agents. I've met them all, you know, and they all have their own belief systems about what America should look like and what it should be like. Okay. Now. I've also had the blunt of racism had knocked on my ass. You know, I've had, I've been called every name in the book that you could ever imagine. 
I've been beat up. I've been pushed down. I've been oppressed. I have allowed myself to be oppressed. I, you know, I've gone through it a lot. Do I talk about it? Not necessarily all the time because it's not the focal point of my personal life. But it does happen. So what we're witnessing today is, is a historical events. Historical events. Now they want to impeach the president. And I'm sure it's within their right to attempt to do that. I can't say yes or no because I don't have control over that. I don't have any control of it because I don't have any control over what those guys do up in that office. I don't have any control of what my con congressional leaders do. Because they seem to kind of do their own thing. And they just kind of just let things play out. Sure, they give us an 800 number to call and a code to push in if you're on board with the thing. <clears throat> that way, so they can wash their hands and say the American people said it was okay to do. But either way, you have to look at it. This is a historically, a very historical moment in time that you're part of, that you and I are part of. We're part of a pandemic that hasn't happened in 100 years or so. Part of something that's killing people, something that's very rare. We're, we're part of, a, an op, of a, something that happened in America where American citizens were sick and tired, a group of citizens, not all citizens, but there's millions of people down there. Okay, so a group of people who were not on board with what they saw in this in this election. And, you know, you could say, Iggy, well, you're wrong. They, we'd never do that. You know, we America doesn't do that. You know, America doesn't assassinate people either and drop bombs on other countries or didn't drop the first nuclear weapons on Japan. Because if we didn't drop them on Japan, then the war would go would be keep going. And then, you know what, the, the Germans would have created the UFOs with the bell tower uh, magnetism raising thing that would, would annihilate America. You know, I get it. I get what you're saying. But, you know, America is the only country that actually bombs people like that. America is the only country that has three presidents who bombed spaces where innocent people were killed. Okay, so we really got to think about what we're saying here. You know, nobody goes, nobody goes out of office without some kind of blemish. You got Bush. You know, you got Clinton, you've got Barack Obama, and now you got Trump. All these guys have had their hands in somebody's death over the years. Okay, so either it's in the Middle East or someplace else. They've had their hands and they have shed blood. All in the name of Christ, all in the name of God, all in the name of America. Because we want to be safe because the terrorists are going to come get us. They're going to kill us. They're going to blow up the Twin Towers. But yet now these are two. We have new terrorists because they just stormed the Capitol and they're going in. You know, I don't have answers for you or anything. I'm just throwing things at you that how I'm seeing America play out. Remember, I'm a foreigner. So a foreigner will have a different, a different, a different view of what America's like. Because I was raised different. I was raised with different types of upbringing, different types to see things differently. Does it make it right or wrong? No, it doesn't make it right or wrong. It's just, I'm not your all-American boy, like they say. You know, I'm not, I wasn't, I grew up poor, you know, and I grew up in in Peru, you know, for a part of my life and then came here and had to acclimate, had to get deported, had to potentially get sent back, you know. So I know what it's like. I, when you're in America, you have to respect the laws and I, that's my point. Even people who, even people who, you know, try to break the law through immigration. I had to go through it. I had to I had to prove that I was worthy to be an American citizen, naturalized citizen. So most of you are born in a state, so you're property of that state versus me, I'm property of the federal government. Not, well, not property per se, but well, you know, maybe I am property. Who regardless, I'm accountable to the federal government. So when they send me IRS form, I have to pay it. Most of you who were born in Ohio and stuff, you don't have to pay, uh, you know, your taxes. But most people don't know that. And we don't need to get into that because that's something you need to research, not me tell you. But either way, I'm just here to say you're part of history. You're, you're engulfed in it. You're going to be in it for the next four to eight years, however much. Life. We're in a crucial turning point of what happens to us because we're very young. We're a very young country. And this is a great time to learn. What will the history books write? about what happened today. He who wins controls what's written. So my personal opinion, this is my only opinion I'll give you, is that social media 
personally has way too much power. The last time that any type of media like Microsoft had power, it got broke up. The government broke it up from creating a monopoly. And that's where Google came from. So now I believe it's time for the government to step in and break up all these companies again and create something better. I truly believe that. I think it's time for the, that thing because there's way too much control and they're way too much. They're, they don't have any accountability to anyone. They suck your dollars. They take it. Okay. Your cable bills are out of control. Everything. Social media just is in total rampant, in total disarray. We enjoy it. We use it. I'm, a, I'm on social media with Apple, you know, with these platforms that I'm using on Facebook. But you know what? It's It needs to be regulated. Will it destroy it? Who knows? I don't know. They have so much money. They can create new things. But you know what? They're, they're The people who have the money control what happens to you, what happens in this world. The people who have the money, the billions of dollars, those people dictate what happens to you and to me. You may think you're in control of things, but you're not. You're only in control of what you can control. Your life, the clothes, the food you eat, the, the places you visit. They control everything else. The stuff you cannot change unless you step up out of your comfort zone. Okay, The billionaires control the world. You and me are part of that system. You and me are used in that system. If you don't believe it, then I'm, I can't tell you. I, I don't know. I, we, I don't know what to say. Because when you go to Kroger's, you buy exactly what they want you to buy. You don't buy what you want to buy. You are given options to buy, and out of those options, you will either buy option one, two, three, or four, and that's it. Okay. You will buy this box of cereal, that flavor of cereal, or that cereal, and you do it. Okay. When you go to the store, you will buy. This type of meat, that type of meat, or this type of meat. When you go to the store, you will buy this carrot, this cucumber, or this broccoli. Okay? So, you think you're in control. You think that you have some say. And you do when you come to decide if it's going to be organic or non-organic, whatever. That's a whole nother game there. But they control everything. They control what you drink, what you eat, what you drive. You know, I drive a Ford F-150, Okay? I could drive any truck, right? But my limits are to this truck and they dictate what I buy. They dictate what I'm gonna ride, okay? So the, we have freedoms and we don't have freedoms, okay? We're not as free as we think we're free, all right? Because when you go home, when you click on the light, okay? You gotta pay for that, okay? Even though there's solar and there's wind and stuff, things that are harnessed naturally by Mother Earth that are given to us, enable rights, you know, of sunlight unrestricted source of energy coming from outer space and we have to pay for it <laughs> you know it's not that we have to pay for it it's just we don't have the means to tap it and control it and channel it unless you have solar panels and then in some states in some places you can't even have solar panels in your house you're not allowed to it's against the law and florida is like that why is it against the law i'll tell you why it's against the law because there are things called lobbies. There are things where people lobby, where people pay, well, lobbyists, people pay for them, for these big corporations who are actually considered people. They have a number and they're just like you and me, okay? You can sue the corporation, not the people who run the corporation and the corporation can close down. So what I'm saying is you're, you're free and you're not free, okay? You're free as you want to be, okay? If you want to run off to the mountains, you can. Many of you want to run off to the mountains. But the question is, where are you going to go? Can you go there? Are you able to go there? Will you make it there? I'd like to run off to the mountains. I'd like to run off someplace where I'm free from everything. But I know that I also need a connection to this world I'm in. This world I'm in is also has its purpose. Okay. It has its purpose. So our purpose is not necessarily to fit in. Our purpose is to find our bliss in our, find our journey, find our path while we're here, while we're in here and what we're going to do. Life is very short, my friends. Okay. Life is very short. Believe it or not. 
believe it or not, it's very, very, very short. And very few people will speak their mind because they're afraid to. Okay? Right or wrong, okay, a person who speaks their mind speaks it. But also, the person who speaks it listens to the other person who's speaking their truth. Because remember, my truth is my truth. Your truth is yours. Okay? Why we don't agree is because our truths are different. Because the way we perceive the world is not the way we'd like to experience it. For a lot of people, what they saw on the Capitol, that was a normal event. That was something that was evidently going to happen. For a lot of other people, like, oh, my God, those guys are crazy. You know, those guys are, you know, there's, you, you heard it all. I don't have to, I don't have to add any more to it because you already know. Some of you already have friends like that who disagree with you, people who agree with you, and people who are indifferent with you. Because that's what we do. We're humans. That's that's how we learn. When we cut somebody off because we want our point to be heard and be valid, because you're wrong. No, Iggy, you're wrong. You're wrong. That's not right. That's a disgrace. That's an embarrassment to America. Blah, 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 blah. I'm thinking to myself, it needed to happen. Because you don't grow when you're silenced and when you're quiet and when you're not able to express your opinions. Now, I don't agree with people killing people, but you know what? I'm sorry, and it's very tragic that these things do happen, okay? Like the people, when we went to the Middle East and we bombed, when, when President Bush bombed, when Clinton bombed, when Obama bombed, and even when Trump bombed, somebody died. It wasn't just military personnel. Who's to say the military personnel's family weren't visiting that day? You don't know anything. We don't know nothing, okay? It's like a video game. You watch it from afar, you blow it up, and your day's over, you know? Millions and millions of people died in these wars, okay? And millions of people will die in many wars, okay? But my point is this. Just the art of listening has been lost. Now we've created the art of my point is more valid than your point, okay? So when someone talks to you about something, you have choice to either freaking ignore them, yell at them, delete them, kick them aside. So I'm gonna tell you something that I did yesterday, okay? Just to prove a point, okay? How it feels, okay? So yesterday, and Christopher was there. He was, he was, he was posting some things on my stuff. I posted all the things about free speech. I only left one, but I have like several posts and people were commenting and um, I started to delete all the comments. Bloop, 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 bloop. Took them all down and people were coming back. Biggie, my comments gone. I didn't even explain to them that I was taking them down. My point was, this is how easy it is to do this. Okay, to be able to censor, to not uh, listen, to not even approach somebody, to not even care for what they said. I did read the comments and some of them I agree with, some I didn't. But my point was not to create animosity among people because it was starting to get to that point. But I deleted them because I wanted everybody to know what it was like to when not, not to be heard. And you know what? You're not heard a lot, actually. But I started to delete them. I only left one post. Left post. I left one. Yeah, because it's my page, right? I get to control the narrative. I get to control whatever goes on there or whatever I want to see or read. Whatever I think is good for me. Whatever I think is okay. Whatever strokes my ego. Was I stroking my ego? No, it was proven a point. Okay, I wasn't trying to be there to be, you know, dictator of my timeline, you know. I was here to prove a point that this is how easy and how it happens. And how you don't even realize it happens to you. Okay, how easy your government, okay, the people that you trust, the things that you think are important to you, can just ignore you and censor you. So when you mail your letters and when you send your, your correspondence to your representatives and to your senatorial, you know, representatives, are they reading your stuff? Or are they doing what Iggy just did to prove a point? Deleting you or just putting you in a, filing you in a 
round paper basket, you know? We will never know. We will never know. But that's my point. My point is we have to listen. We have to get to places where we can kind of meet in, in the middle. Okay, so, you know, the experiment that I pulled yesterday, was it fair? Of course it's fair. <laughs> we are experimenting on all the time. When someone gets angry about somebody's post, they delete it, right? When you don't like somebody, you delete them. But it's not, I didn't delete anybody personally. Now, maybe they deleted me. Fine. That's their choice. I can't control that. But I can control the narrative when it's placed in my space, in my presence. And so the government can do the same thing. They can control the narrative. So we don't know who, what, when, and what really truly happened that day. We only can see and hear what played out and for eyewitnesses and things that people saw. Okay, so the narrative was the worst cops involved. The narrative was the media showed it. Okay, and there are people who I know personally who were down there and they hadn't, didn't even know what was going on. They were there to protest because they didn't agree with a lot of things. Now, do I have friends? Are all my friends one way or the other? No, I have friends on all sides of the field, all sides of the, of the, of the fence, you know? I have some in the middle, some on the left, some on the right, because you know what? That's what makes, that's what builds character in you to have different points of view and different ways of people thinking. Now, there are some people you just, you just won't ever get along with. You will never, you will never, you know, you will never come to a common ground. That's okay. But the thing is, we have to listen. We have to listen because we are so strong sometimes as Americans, as human beings, that our point is valid. And then when we get crushed, when our, our validity starts to be challenged, we get very emotional. We get very, very, very uh, triggered by the things that some other people would say because we feel they're not listening to us. We feel that they're not comprehending what we're trying to say. Because the other person's probably trying to promote their point of view. They, they totally ignore yours. But that happens in just about everything we do. So where do we go from here? Will Trump be impeached? I don't know. You know, will the 25th Amendment be invoked by Pence? I don't know. You know, what will happen? I don't know. The only thing I know what will happen that tomorrow I have to pay my taxes to my real estate because that's coming due because if I don't, they'll take my house over a course of period of time if I don't pay. I know that tomorrow I gotta pay my credit card bill because if I don't, they'll damage my credit, then I can't get more credit to buy things that I need in the future or ever. I know if I don't pay my electric bill, they'll cut my electric bill, and then I can't, I can't watch TV or keep my food fresh in the refrigerator. So even though it plays a part of my life, you know, what's happening out there, there's also another, t another aspect of it. It, it, it. There's nothing that I can really do. There's nothing that I can really, I can really say. Because I can control the narrative in the spaces that I'm in, where I'm at, and who I'm with, who I want to be around, who I want to associate with, who are my friends. As much, it's just the same as them. Now, the only time when we can control the narrative is, you know, people who want to give a point across, we either protest, okay, all right, or we become rioters. And that's kind of what happens. When we're not, when someone's not heard, they go to the extreme. And that's what you've witnessed over the summer. You saw extremists. You saw peaceful protests. And you saw extreme protests. Even with the Trump thing, you saw extremists. People who were really extreme. And then you saw people who were protesting also very quietly. Okay? That's the thing. You just have to understand that it is just... It is just something that has to play out. It has to play out very naturally, very organic. We can, can only control parts and pieces of it, and that's it. Now, there are more of us than them, and that was proven the other day. Now, I do believe, this is my personal opinion, right or wrong, I don't know. It could have been worse. And I believe if they really, truly wanted to kill people, like, really kill, like, people got killed just because of physical reasons or just too many people trampling. The one girl got shot, okay, because what's going to happen you start breaking through the, the capital or something the, 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 the security doesn't know what you're doing they're going to shoot you 
with somebody calling the, the dogs off. But regardless of what I'm saying, this is my point. That could have been much more ugly. I believe those people, if they truly, truly, that was just a message. You know, I've said this to several people. This That was a message to the elitist politician, who they are elitist, and most of them are rich millionaires and billionaires. And they have a lot of money. And they do a lot of stuff, you know, with that money. This doesn't necessarily benefit us. But that was a message from a group of Americans. Not all Americans, but from a group of Americans, that was a message that you are helping create something that was always there. It was very quiet and very still, but now it also has its opportunity to share it. So that could have been really bad because when I watched that video, some of those videos, it could they could have done whatever they wanted and they didn't, you know, and who's to say? That it's over i don't know but i do know this that could have been a much uglier event and thank god that it wasn't because you know what we don't like to see that happen and you know just the sheer fact that it happened is also a message to all of us to every single one of us here that america has a lot of healing to do that america has a lot of work to do that this country is very divided super divided you know, you have your right, your left, and you have your middle, your moderates in the middle. All these people, these three groups. People say it's just two groups. No, it's three. Because you have the people who sit in the middle who try to hold it together. And then the other ones are either one way, too far to the one way or too far the other way that they can't see the middle. So hopefully they can all come to some common ground, some common, you know, understanding of what's happening. But America has a lot of growing up to do. Our country is a very young country. Our country has a lot of growing up to do. Now, they're going to impeach maybe the president. You know, like I said, that's their choice. <sighs> Are they feeling the flames too doing it? I thought about that myself. Are they feeling the flames wanting to impeach the president or throw him out? You know, if they can do it to the president, I guess is what my point is. If they can do it to the president or anybody who's in a political office, they can do it to you. Much quicker, much faster. Okay, so a small band of people cause a lot of havoc. And a lot of people who I personally know who were there were there for peaceful protest and they didn't even know what was happening. A lot of people didn't know that that shit, that shit was going on up there until much later. Because you know why? Because they turned off everybody's cell phone. Everybody's cell phones were turned off in that area. Because it's a common thing that they do. They turn off common the cell phones. So even when Trump said his message on on his Twitter account, whatever, whatever he said on, those people never, never got the message, you know? Uh, that's my understanding if they turn off everybody's cell phone right so there's a lot of weirdness in this there's a lot of stuff that is really left a kind of a bad taste in my mouth right kind of like a lot of weird it's not even a conspiracy theory it's just weird you know it's just there's a lot of holes there's a lot of holes in it there's a lot of holes in it but i just hope that we can come together and heal what that looks like i don't know man I don't know because from what, what I'm looking at on both sides, I just want everybody, just, everybody wants to be right. No one wants to be wrong. Nobody wants to give an inch. Nobody wants to give an inch. This group doesn't want to give an inch. That group doesn't want to give an inch. And then they're calling for unity and who's going to unify them? It's, it's pretty evident that presidents aren't very good unifiers. Okay, throughout history. I don't know very many presidents who unified countries, but it has to be leaders within these communities to come to an understanding. Hey, you know what? As leaders in our community, we have to find the right way to bring our people together, to bring our country together. We don't have to agree on everything. We don't have to agree on every, every aspect of things. We just have to understand that we have to be right with each other. We can't just go crazy and, and just do whatever we feel like doing. 
but we lack leadership because we don't teach leadership in school. We don't teach our kids to be leaders. We don't teach our kids. We teach our kids. I don't know what we teach our kids, man. I know read, write, arithmetic, but they don't teach you how to balance a checkbook. They don't teach you that how to wash your clothes or iron your clothes or fold your clothes. They don't teach you those 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 skills that you're going to need. Are you supposed to learn on the home? But the homes are so different now. Homes are different. Some homes are single family home. A mom's got to work really hard. You know, our dad's got to work really hard, you know, and they don't get to see their kids very often. What are the solutions? That's what people do. Leaders do. They step up. They don't, they don't, they're not leaders because they want to be, you know, hey, look at me. No, they have to be leaders because, hey, what can I do to help? What can I do to put you in a leadership role? What can I do to make you leader in your home, you leader in your community? This isn't the army, you know, this isn't, you know, oh, look at this guy, he's a leader. No, leaders create leaders. Those what, that's what good leaders do. Good leaders create good leaders. Because if you if you follow, you have to also be a leader. Because when you go back to your home, back to your sphere of influence, you have to lead that. You have to be the example. So if you don't think you're a leader, you're wrong. You're a leader. You lead. You share. There's somebody that you touch, somebody who looks up to you. There's somebody who says, hey, you know what? I get what you're saying. I see what you're saying. And then they go off and they pass the message on and the message on. And this message of leadership keeps getting passed on. But we don't have that anymore. We, we don't have that. Everything's so cut, clean, cut, and, you know, it's just cut and dry, man. You know? just Everything's just so cut and dry. I hate those guys because they hate me. I hate them because I hate them. I hate them because they hate me. You know, hate breeds more hate. You know? We all talk about peace and love, you know? But not everybody's ready for peace and love. Not everybody knows what that means. Not a lot of people don't know what it means to be loved. They have a hard time loving themselves, let alone one to have to love another person. So how do we teach another human being to honor who they are in this world as they walk on this path, on this plane? That's our job, to figure it out. Those of you who have children, you're, you have a huge responsibility to show your kids, you know, different aspects of things and to show your your kids that there's a different way to live. Some things we're born with, some things we learn. And if we're going to learn things and there's things that we have to learn, there's things that are inside of us, that, you know, why do we correct our children? Because we want them to be right. We want them to learn. We want them to understand that that doesn't necessarily work in the fabric of how society rules and works. You know, parents' jobs are really important. Grandmother's jobs are very important. You know, but we'll we'll get better. We'll get better because we we have no choice but to. Because if we don't, the opposite happens. Put your mind in the positive thinking, positive frame of mind. Because you can't walk around positive every day. It's just impossible. It's as much, You can't be negative every day. It's just impossible. You run the, emo, the gamut of emotions. Your emotion goes up and down. And then sometimes you're in the middle. So leadership. Who knows. We'll see. We'll see how that works out. We'll see what happens in the next four years. What happens with the, the leadership that's there. Now they have. The Democrats for example have won the house they have the senate they have the presidency we'll see how these leaders work we'll see how they they lead our country what they teach our children what we will embrace so my friends just wanted to pop in and say hi and i hope you enjoyed this little time with me i didn't mean to talk so long but just kind of i just got in that place where you know i was feeling that people weren't being good to each other because they felt like they had to prove things other than listening to each other and prove the fact that this is the way it is and that's the way it is, that you're wrong. I just saw, I just see, 
I just see a lot of infight, a lot of ego, a lot of frustration. Because we're humans. We have feelings. We get triggered. We get emotional. It's normal to see something and see the injustice in it. All right, my friends. Just do the best you can. It's good to be here. That is a vital part of my belief system. To be, It's good to be here. Got to believe it. To achieve it. Talk to yourself. Because you're the only one you'll listen to. All right? All right, peace out. Ho'oponopono. Matakuyasin. Oho. Yirisikwi. What is above is below. Remember that. So, and with that, I'm signing out. And I'll talk to you guys soon. We'll see you next time. Take care.